In this video, I'm going to review Cohesity's cloud spin functionality. So Cohesity is an all-in-one data protection system, and cloud spin is what allows you to take a virtual machine that you backed up on-prem to a Cohesity appliance and instantiate that in the cloud. So we'll start by taking a look at how Cohesity protects data. Uh, there is protection jobs and there are policies. Uh, so here, uh, inside of Policy Manager, you see some of these CAN policies that come out of the box, and then you see uh, this policy here, which is the one that we'll use for this demonstration. It's one that I created that includes Cloud Spin. So um, if we take a look at Policy Manager and what a new policy might look like, as you can see, um, it will contain a schedule, um, it'll contain things like Essentially replicating your backups or archiving them. In this case, we're going to review Cloud Spin. So, uh, if I was creating a policy and adding Cloud Spin functionality to that policy, basically every protection job that leverages this policy will also uh, create a Cloud Spin job after each backup. So, that's what was done here um, for this uh, CS underscore policy 01. And that's been attached to a protection job, so we'll review these protection jobs. As you can see, CS underscore job01 uses this policy. Um, and let's take a look at the protection runs. So these are each one of the runs that executed for this protection job. And we can take a look at any one of them, and you'll see that there's a backup task, which basically backs up the virtual machine to the Cohesity appliance, and then there's a cloud spin task. And that cloud spin tasks basically takes that virtual machine, sends it up to AWS, and converts it to an AMI. So why might this be useful, or how might we use this? Um, as you can see up in the top right-hand corner here, you have a button to launch all instances. So this is a way to do kind of a mass recovery to an alternative target. Uh, it allows us to basically take these virtual machines that exist on-prem and run them up in AWS for a period of time. So let's take a look at how we might do this in a more automated fashion. Uh, this kind of covers the structure of Cloud Spin and how it fits into Cohesity, um, how it's policy-based. Um, but in order to really make use of this, uh, it'd be good to leverage the API and be able to instantiate these VMs um, at large scale and very quickly. So let's take a look at launching a cloud spin recovery via the API. Now this process isn't fully automated at this point. What I really want to do is just focus on the API call and some of the key parameters that will need to be populated uh, in order to recover from a specific backup. So um, we'll start by just taking a look at a simple script that I wrote, um, which pulls some of the backup details. Um, so this is the API endpoint right here, uh, and I already know the job ID that I'm uh, concerned with, the one that we've reviewed in the user interface. Um, and basically it'll go through and convert epoch time to a human readable date and just show us all the available backups from which we can conduct a cloud spin recovery from. So let's execute that script. Uh, and as you can see here, um, this is what we have available to us for recovery. Um, so this is the date that the backup started. This is the epoch date, which I'll show uh, the reason that's important in a bit, and this is the job instance ID. So let's look at um, the payload that would be required uh, in order to pass the post call to the Cohesity API to conduct the cloud spin recovery. So this is the payload in JSON format, and uh, as I referred to earlier, we have a job instance ID and a start time. So these are the two that really need to be populated for you to be specific about which backup you're going to conduct the recovery from. Um, obviously, you need to name the, uh, the job as well. 
so I have another script that conducts that update uh, and what we'll do is this time we'll go with the most recent backup and we'll go ahead and populate that config so let's take a look at that configuration uh, that we just made the change to again we'll look at it in JSON format and as you can see this is the job instance ID from the most recent backup and this is the start time for the most recent backup so this isn't actually what the payload will look like I'm using curl uh, to conduct the post call uh, and um, we're looking at it in kind of cleaned up JSON format through the JQ parser uh, but the actual file looks like this uh, so this pay basically this payload is on a single line and that's the, the primary difference so this is the actual file uh, that's called by the deploy script uh, so the deploy script is very simple. Uh, it has the API endpoint, it conducts a post, and it calls uh, this file that we, we just looked at. So let's go ahead and run that. And as you can see from this output, it was uh, initiated successfully. So let's come over to the UI and take a look at the progress of our cloud spin recoveries. We'll go to the menu on top and we're going to click on test dev uh, and this is where you'll have the status of all the clones that are taking place and technically that's what a cloud spin recovery is it's a clone of a backup it's just targeted uh, to a cloud resource so we'll click on here and as you can see there are several that are in process there were three virtual machines that were part of the job uh, and they are underway so let's go back over to our AWS console and as you can see here um, two of the uh, instances have already started up so a uh, quick look back at the UI we have this P1 VD bench VM the Splunk VM and this demo AD VM and the PD1 VD bench VM has started up the Splunk uh, instance is started up they're probably at yeah, this uh, Splunk one is initializing once this finishes initialization we should see the start of our third instance while we're waiting for that third instance to come up why don't we go back and look at the JSON file uh, that we used to create the post call uh, in a little bit more depth, we focused on the key parameters for ensuring that we're calling the proper backup or we're conducting the recovery from the pro proper backup set. Um, but there are several other things that may be of interest in here. Um, so obviously there's an AWS entity we need a target to deploy the, the VMs to. Um, and this is something that we've already defined. It's a, a source uh, using Cohesity terminology. Uh, and it, it's what allows us to um, have a target to um, send these virtual machines to. Um, but here's where uh, you may um, want to conduct further modifications. So these are uh, obviously specific uh, AWS parameters. This is a region. This is an instance size. Uh, this is a VPC ID a subnet ID and a security group ID. So all of these were associated uh, with the virtual machines uh, that were recovered or turned into EC2 instances. So right now um, what I did is really just um, conduct this recovery using global parameters, basically parameters that apply to all the instances. But you could come into this file and basically create a stanza for each individual instance. So if you wanted to recover one instance as a T2 micro and another as an M4 large or something of that nature, uh, that's absolutely possible. Just going to take a, a bigger payload file. So let's go back to our AWS console. Let's give it a refresh and see if our third instance is on its way up. And there it is. Uh, the demo AD instance is up and in the process of initializing. 
So that's essentially what a cloud spin uh, recovery to AWS looks like. Uh, we started off down the automation path. Obviously, it wasn't fully automated, but that'll give you some idea of what it would take to automate the process so that it can be done very quickly and at scale. If you have any other questions or would like to discuss cloud spin, cohesity, AWS, automation, uh, any one of those topics in more detail, please send me an email, uh, jeff at p1technologies. That's P as in Peter, the number one, technologies, plural, dot com. Thanks very much.